Here we're going to answer some questions about domain of two functions f and g that are graphed. Um, we'll also look at operations like addition and subtraction, multiplication and division when we have graphs. So first let's locate the domain of f. So the graph of f starts at 0 on the x-axis and as you travel to the right it stops at x equals 6. So the domain of f is brackets 0 comma 6 with brackets. We use brackets because the endpoints are included in the domain with the closed in dots. Now the domain of g, g starts at x equals negative 4 and it ends at x equals positive 4 and we use brackets for those endpoints as well. Next let's find the domain of f plus g f minus g and f times g. So these three operations, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, are going to be, when we find the domain, it's the intersections of the two domains. And you can look at the graph and you could see where they overlap each other or you can do separate number lines for the domains of f and g and look at the overlap there. For instance, f was 0 to 6. So if we do a number line and we just show 0 to 6 and just connect and shade between and then let's do a number line for the domain of g, negative 4 to positive 4. So the overlapping region there is going to be from 0 to 4 and that's going to be the domain for the addition and subtraction and multiplication of the functions. So the domain is brackets 0 comma 4. Now the only difference is when we do the division f divided by g we have to make sure that g of x cannot be 0. So graphically we're looking at does g of x ever equal 0? Does it ever cross or touch the x-axis? And you can see that g of x never crosses the x-axis. It's never equal to 0. So if it was equal to 0, I would have to add those restrictions to my domain. But since it doesn't, then it's going to have the same domain of 0 to 4. Next, let's do f plus g of 2. So f plus g of 2 can be rewritten as f of 2 plus g of 2. Now f of 2 means go to 2 on the x-axis and hit the f graph. So we have to go down. And when we hit the f graph, the y value is at negative 2. So f of 2 is negative 2. Now g of 2 means we go to 2 on the x-axis and we hit the g function at 5 and we want to add these results together now. So negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So f plus g of 2 is equal to 3. Now let's do g minus f of 4. So that can be rewritten as g of 4 minus f of 4. So g of 4 means we want to go to the x-axis at 4 and we want to go to the g graph and the answer is the y value 3. So f of 4, go to 4 on the x-axis and hit the f graph and the y value is 2. And now we want to subtract 3 minus 2, we get 1. So g minus f of 4 is equal to 1. f divided by g of 0. So this can be rewritten as f of 0 divided by g of 0. Okay, so f of 0 means go to 0 and you want to hit the f function. Well, that lands right at 0, so we get 0 for f of 0. Now g of 0 means we're at 0, but now we want to go to the g function, and that answer is 3. And 0 divided by 3 is 0. So f divided by g of 0 is 0. Now let's see if it changes if we do g divided by f of 0. 
So this is now g of 0 divided by f of 0, and I can just use those answers I got above. g of 0 was 3, f of 0 was 0. So if I try to do 3 divided by 0, I cannot. That is undefined. Okay, now let's find the domain of g divided by f. So first, remember that the intersection of the two domains for f and g was the interval 0 to 4. So now if I do g divided by f, I need to see from the graph, does f of x equal 0? I don't want it to be equal to 0. So let's go to the graph. And at 0, at y equals 0, we're looking at this horizontal line. Does the graph of f ever touch that line? And it does twice. It touches it at x equals 0 and again at x equals 3. So I need to remove x equals 0 and 3 from the interval. So what that means is we take our interval and I, it is 0 to 4 and removing it means you don't actually take it out of there. What you do is you switch from brackets to parentheses. So I'm going to start my interval with parentheses 0 and then I want to also remove 3. So my first interval is going to go in numerical order from 0 to 3 with parentheses. Union, and I'm going to pick up again with 3, and I'm going to finish the interval to 4. And I keep the brackets on the 4 because 4 was not restricted. So this is going to be the domain of g divided by f when you take out the restrictions of 0 and 3 from that interval.